Well, after another camping trip, the rear stabilizer switch in my RV stopped working, and today I'm going to fix it and show you how to do it. After returning from another camping trip, my rear stabilizer switch stopped working for no apparent reason. So I had to dig into that, and I fixed the problem. I'm going to show you what I did to find it, how I fixed it, and maybe this will help you in your camping adventures. So I'm underneath the RV, and I was looking for my tank sensor ground wire. I was starting to anyway. I noticed that my rear stabilizer jack button, the switch, wouldn't work. It's always worked. So I'm under here and I'm looking at the switch. I look at the bundle of wires that's taped together here, and you can see that the red wires, which are power normally, they're cut. And they have corrosion on them, which means they've been cut for a while. That's what it looks like. And they were clean cut off the end. And I started feeling around in the undercarriage of this uh, railing here, the skirting, and found this cap. This is the connector that goes on the top of these things. There must have been water or something under here. It shorted, popped, and just blew the wire apart. Always look for something simple because it's usually going to be the simple things that need to be fixed. All right, if you're following along with me here, this is not going to be a terribly complicated fix. I'm going to use my wire strippers. Wire strippers have different gauges of wires that they can take the covering on and different clamp sizes, and they have different colors for the different type of wire or um, ends that you're going to put on. In my case, I'm going to strip off the end of the wire here, get rid of the corrosion, and then put a new uh, end cap on. And I've got these little uh, little caps to match just what was on there before. These uh, crimped ends, they're insulated. Uh, they're not waterproof, but they're insulated, and they should do the trick to get this switch back online. Just remember, too, when you're dealing with the red wire, this means it's hot. That means there's power coming to the end of this thing. And so if this thing touches metal, or you touch metal while you're touching the end of that, you're going to make the connection to ground. It's going to spark, make a short, and then uh, maybe maybe even blow the fuse. Hopefully it can blow the fuse before anything bad happens. You want that. So I'm going to strip that back last when I'm ready to go. You can tell the right gauge usually if it's not written on the wire. When you squeeze it here, your wire stripper down, it'll uh, cut just the plastic coating. You'll know, you'll, have, you'll get a feeling for it if you do it enough. And then uh, you pull it back and there's your clean copper wire. And I'm gonna strip it back enough to go on the inside of this thing. That's how far you know back to go. I'm gonna go back probably a little bit more. So I'm gonna strip a little bit more so I'll get a good connection and make sure it crimps in there at the right place. And this side of the wire is going to be 14 gauge. I'm going to give it a quick twist. This is not a live end. It's not a live wire. This one, on the other hand, is. So I just want to be careful with that. Because I'm working with it live. This looks more like it's 12 gauge. All right, now I've got both these wires stripped back to where I want them to go. I'm gonna make that connection. Just twist them together. And I've got this pushed in as far as it'll go. If you're a person that does this sort of thing all the time, then I'm not showing you anything new, but this is for someone who's never done it before. Since I think this is going to be closer to the 10 to 12 gauge clamp or crimper, I'm going to use this side of the crimper to uh, squeeze this down. Open it up and put it where the metal uh, fitting is inside and give it a squeeze. Give it a pretty good squeeze and there you go. I suspect now it's going to work. Oh yeah. Now that this is fixed, I need to retape it back up with some electrical tape and uh, make sure that this stays out of the water trough where it was up here before. That's where the water was and where it got into this fitting. You know, I, I bet you if I look really close into these other fittings, they may also have some corrosion from being exposed to water. So I'm using a little um, 
auto parts deli, like an uh, like a deli you crawl underneath a car. It's perfect for the RV for my cement pad that I'm on because I don't have to slide around on the ground and get all screwed up. You don't have to be an electrician to get this kind of a fix. None of this stuff is hard. It's just a matter of knowing by doing. Once you do it and you know how to do it, you do it a couple of times, it becomes easier and you can help yourself and maybe help someone you know. The funny thing about this is it worked for all last season and even a trip this season. And all of a sudden it didn't work anymore. So for the time being, to keep this out of it, I'm just going to tape all this stuff together. You know, I should probably use a zip tie. I'm gonna, I don't have one at the moment. That's something you should have in your RV, definitely, is electrical tape and even some zip ties. You never know when you're going to need it for something. All right. It's not waterproof, but it's out of the water for now. So that was just a simple electrical fix, a 12 volt fix in your RV, something that you can do with just a little bit of practice and a couple of simple tools. Oftentimes 12 volt problems in your RV are simple fixes just like this one. I encourage you to get out there and try that for yourself. Of course, always work safely. And if you're uncomfortable with any of this stuff, you wanna consult a professional before doing it. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you for troubleshooting more stuff in your RV. As you get out there on the road and use your RV, more things are going to break. It's just helpful to know how to fix these things and know that it's not that complicated and you don't have to be intimidated. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and ring that notification bell to get more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.